Resume recording. There we go. Okay. Okay. Board of Library Trustees meeting for November 17th, 2020. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the library trustees is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to participate in the meeting via Zoom can do so by clicking on this link. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1-929-436-2866 and enter meeting ID 899-5345-7283, then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment. By following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on their telephone keypad or using the raise hand function on Zoom. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. So I call the meeting to order and we will go through a roll call. So Dan Hall. Present. Dan is present. Don Pearson. Here. Don is here. Eileen McDougall. Eileen. Here. Okay, Kathleen Black Reynolds. Kathleen is on mute, but Kathleen is responding that she is here by text, by chat. Okay, and uh, Jim LeMay, are you here? No. Jim LeMay is not here yet. I... He might join later. <laughs> um, I call the meeting to order. And uh, Kathleen, the, the last time you tried to talk, we didn't hear you, even though you were off mute. How about now? No. All right, so Kathleen, maybe let us know, uh, but uh, I think we'll continue with the business. And uh, Kathleen, if you need to say something, uh, you can go do the raise your hand thing. Um, so we can start out with review and approval of the minutes from the October 20th meeting. Does everybody have the minutes from the um, town website email address? Yes. There's my minutes. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Thanks. No. Do the minutes. <laughs> I didn't have any comment on the minutes. I had a procedural comment on the, it was the town email. When Tina sent this, the action plan with spelling corrections, it sort of hid all of the attachments for the original invitation. So I had to sort of uh, spend a little extra time wondering if I had deleted the, the original invitation by accident. And I eventually found a little paper clip at the top that I touched and then the attachments reappeared. Sort of strange, did anyone else have that? Experience? No. Anyway, I think, I think I looked at the original and didn't look at the updated. Yeah, me too. And so I never saw the hidden attachments as hidden. Yeah. Okay. Any uh, discussion about the minutes? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Eileen moves to approve. I'll second. Don seconds. Okay, and we'll go around the room. So, Dan? I uh, approve. Dan votes yes. Don? I vote yes. Yes. Eileen? Yes, I approve. 
Okay, Kathleen? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So it's unanimous. We have approved the minutes. All right, back to the agenda. Next, we have the financial and statistical reports. I don't know about you, but I have not reviewed those yet. I haven't either, and I'm having a hard time bringing them up. So uh, I'll just listen while I try to bring them up again. Interlibrary loan is up the past couple of months. Um, Tina, did you forward Jim the, um, the link? I tried to Eileen, but I was there were, when, I, when I, I was using on my phone and my computer, and then I, I had a number of emails that came up for him, from just individually rather than resending it. Usually, I just do him as a group. So I don't know. I guess I I did try, uh, and Jim did too. So I guess if you want, I didn't. Yeah. I'm trying to concentrate on the meeting right now, and um, without trying to go through and find a, the a link to send them again. So all right, I'll I'll try yeah, sending I, it one more time. Okay. Did you send it to his town email? Well, what did I this today before the meeting? I sent it to your home email, I believe. So to make sure to make it easy for you guys. Right, but I'll send the link to his town email. Um, so I'm wondering if he has a different email because I have, I think, in my memory there was a couple different emails I had from for him in my trustee group, and maybe he didn't get it. I just sent. I forwarded him the link. Tina and um, it was I think it's the only email address I have for him me yeah. too I just did the same thing yeah. so he's yeah. maybe he's not looking at his town email or something they can't do anything now because his inbox is full yeah because <laughs> we just filled it <laughs> I think that just again I think it's important that we all try to get on a little early before the meeting to work down some of these kinks if, when they do come up it might be helpful um, and I also sent it to Joy the, the, uh, so did I. Yeah. Uh, and I also told him, oh, we got, I think we got him. Hold on. There we go. Pamela, I think that's his alias. <laughs> we don't have her email address. No, I don't know who this is, but <laughs> this is who the last time I thought it was an attendee and it was Jerry is. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Good evening and hello to Jim's yeah. mustache. Yeah. Jim, I think I have a lot of emails for you, and I think the one that I have in the group, I'll say home email, may be different. And because I sent the link right before the meeting uh, for the for the for tonight's meeting, I sent the Zoom link. And if you didn't get that, I have to double check to see what email is in my group email for you. Okay. But it was also in the town email. I, I didn't see it in my town email, but that's fine. Okay. All right. So Jim, welcome. Thank you. Um, so uh, Gloria, if you wouldn't mind adding Jim to the attendance list. Uh, so we have gone through the minutes and we're now going through the financials and library activity. Uh, we've just been looking at it on our own. We haven't discussed anything yet. I don't see the library activity for October in my uh, spreadsheet. There's library. Yeah, it's, it was in mine. Um, uh, it's weird. It's not showing up in mine. There's the a tab one. called circ and then there's another tab called page two. Oh, okay. There's also a tab called fiscal year 2021. Right, I have all the tabs, but I'm looking at CERC and I don't see anything filled in on, under October. And also in page two, I don't see anything filled in under October. Hmm. Column N, are you sure you're looking at the October chart? Um, I'm looking at you're the looking last at September. At, well, I think I'm looking at the last packet, but 
that we got from the last email from Tina, but please go ahead and I'll okay. see what I can find. Did everybody else get the October statistics? Mine, okay. mine is October. Okay. I see it. Okay. That's weird. Okay. So is there any discussion on the circulation statistics? I don't have the documents in front of me, but I did look at them before I logged on. I haven't yet figured out how to split my screen, my Zoom screen. <clears throat> um, do I, is, is this the document that has the New York Times count and right. no numbers? And I can't recall why that is. I keep emailing my contact and I haven't been able to reach her since July. So I tried a generic email and I haven't heard back. Okay. So I just can't get them. Hmm. Okay. Any other discussion or questions about the circulation statistics? I don't like that the gaming, uh, game, the kids' gaming numbers went way up. It was a tie ball. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh, it was? 33. It's 33. Oh. I called Gloria right before the meeting and I said, Gloria, I think there's a problem. So I doubled, <laughs> I, I pulled out the, um, the stats and it was, it's supposed to be 33. Okay. I thought that was a little bit unusual. That was very high. <laughs> okay. Kathleen, very good. You're oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. I'm so, I don't know where the ball is, honey. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Kathleen, what number are you looking at? The gaming the software under children. 333. Is this on the circulation? Yes. First tab? That's where it was, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So young, young adult gaming software, is that what we're looking at? Row 27? Gaming. I don't Children. know, like I said, I don't have it in front of me. Children's gaming software. Children's gaming software. Which oh, is row 19. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else on the circulation, we can move on to financials. Nine thousand one hundred and fifty encumbered for frog and turtle. When do we expect the frog and turtle to be delivered? Uh, uh, early, early spring. Great. Will we be putting, will we be doing any sort of prep for them? Uh, I think I'll probably wait until they arrive and then mm -hmm. meet, um, contact DPW mm -hmm. to see what they recommend when we decide where we want to put them. But no prep right now because we're going into the winter. <laughs> Okay. Is there any discussion or questions about the financial report? What does it mean in row 14 programming? So we've committed 3585, but um, let's see. We've ex oh, okay. We've expended forty five hundred. We've committed another thirty five hundred, and that adds up to the eight thousand. Yeah. Got it. Okay. If there's no discussion, is there a uh, a motion to approve the two reports? I'll make a motion to approve the two reports. Okay. Kathleen makes the motion. I'll second. Jim seconds. Any further discussion? Okay. So, uh, Dan, how do you vote? Vote yes. Dan votes yes. Don? I vote yes. Don is yes. Eileen? Uh, I vote yes. Yes from Eileen. Jim? Yes. Is yes. Kathleen? Yes. And chair votes yes, so we're unanimous. Thank you. Now we're on to the director's report. Tina. 
So first, you know, the COVID-19 service update, as you know, we began um, allowing uh, patrons into the library on the first floor without an appointment on November 2nd. And things are going well. Uh, it's been a little bit of an increase uh, uh, compared to um, having appointments. I think we've I've talked to a couple of patrons. They seem very pleased to be able to come in more spontaneously without having to make an appointment. We even saw Eileen the other day <laughs> stopping by uh, to pick up her hold. So it's, it, it has a different little bit of more relaxed vibe. So, and, and certainly, um, and most people uh, are not here longer than 10 minutes, 15 at the most, uh, if they're picking up a book or browsing. And we don't have a lot of people at one time. There's periods when there's nobody in the library and then there's periods when there's maybe you know, three or four people browsing and maybe a per one or two people on a computer. So we're definitely below capacity. So it, it, we've had no problems. Um, so I know the, the numbers are up in Wilmington uh, and I haven't heard uh, whether we're gonna, roll, we're gonna roll back. I will tell you there are a few libraries that have rolled back uh, to, their, to the previous phase and some have gone back to just curbside. Uh, right now where we feel that certainly this is manageable and then unless we're told otherwise we're going to kind of uh, um, kind of go forward with what we're doing and just uh, you know monitor it and see how the numbers go whether uh, there is a, a directives from higher up uh, to a uh, pullback uh, but right now I certainly feel like pe the pa patrons really appreciate the opportunity to, to come in and get materials uh, so uh, as long as we can do it, we'll do it. And if we have to roll back, we will. And um, so uh, I think it's a um, nice, uh, the, the uh, curbside still is steady, uh, not as heavy given that people can come in. So it has dropped a little bit, but there are still people calling and we're bringing the books out um, to, their, to the car uh, if they call us, you know, and we're doing that. So, um, and the programs uh, also are continuing to, you know, a mix. We've had some outside programs um, and the virtual programs. I, I sent you some information on uh, some of the virtual programs in the adult department. Uh, the outside programs, um, certainly that the children's department have done have been very appreciated. I think uh, people, are, you know, if they don't have to Zoom as much as they just getting out in the fresh air and, and while the weather is good, um, children's life, Brains have been to the Entile Farm for story time. They did a, a Halloween uh, event and, on, in front of the library. Uh, so those um, events seem to be well received and appreciated. The, um, uh, unfortunately, I have to report our story walk was uh, stolen uh, about a week ago and haven't really done more than you certainly just reported to the police. They put it out in social media. Uh, we haven't heard anything back, whether they found anything or have any leads, so to speak, but that was unfortunate. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what the children's staff are going to do, whether they're going to replace it or try to think about another place to put it that may be more visible. Uh, Isn't uh, this, wasn't this right across from the police department? Yeah, uh, right, road, right. And there's a pond by, uh, behind Rotary, you know, Rotary Park is, there's a field and then there's a pond. The, um, it's a very nice walking, it is, it's a tr nice trail around a nice pond. And there, the, I know the, fair, the uh, ferry houses that were there had been vandalized. There were some ferry houses. I'm surprised they don't have any kind of uh, surveillance there only because this is the second time that at least that vandalism yeah. has happened there. Yeah. And it's right across from the police station. It's kind of embarrassing. Someone has suggested maybe even cutting back some of the, uh, maybe, I don't know if this might be a conservation issue, Don, but cutting back some of the uh, branches and things to make it sort of <coughs> there's a little bit more visibility from the street and from the, uh, the field. Uh, right now it's kind of hidden once you walk go into the trail. So I don't know if that's a partial, partial solution or not. Um, How about just sending a police officer out there? 11 o'clock at night, one yeah, o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but you know, this is the kind of thing that can be done pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I doubt, I doubt that this is a high priority for, for them to monitor uh, something out there. But it was just, I think everybody felt it was just a kind of sad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was just trying to make something, you know, nice and a nice and literary and uh, pleasant and positive for the community to have it 
taken. I think it was just, everyone just felt a little sad <laughs> that it happened. Well, I think it was the same with the fairy houses. And I, yeah. you know, I hate to uh, stereotype, but bored teenagers springs yeah. to mind. And I think the same thing happened with a lot of political signs around town. They were just taken indiscriminately, whether they were Trump signs or Biden signs, and then dumped in somebody's yard. So I think yeah. you know, that's it's a logical thing to think of them as doing that. It's just very distressing mm -hmm. uh, to think of something that, that everybody enjoyed just being ruined with no, yeah. you know, retribution for doing it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll keep you posted on that if, if we find anything or if we decide someplace else to, to put them or to put them back there and try again. Um, so we have some personnel changes. Uh, Jack, Jackie Strobe, who has been a, a page chair, has moved into a part-time library associate position. And if any of you know Jackie, she's quietly competent. She's a very pleasant young woman. And so she's, she's uh, going to be, she replaced uh, Desiree McGuire, who has retired. Does she have like lo long, beautiful yes. hair? Yes. Okay, yes. I met her today. I just didn't, yes. Uh, yes. I yes. wasn't sure of who she was. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, and the, uh, uh, I know Eileen came by the other day to see the first floor meeting room. Uh, we're very pleased with how that came out and we'll be trying to come up with a, uh, a policy that, uh, on how we're going to uh, use it. Right now it's not being used because we're not open enough to use it. Uh, but I, some of the things we'll be doing, you know, tech help, you know, small group meetings in there. Um, it's, um, I think it was a good use of the space. And there certainly a bit, was a need for uh, meetings of two people to have some space to meet uh, where they weren't really eligible to, they weren't, if they're not a nonprofit organization, um, you, you really weren't eligible to book our meeting rooms or, or community groups. So if you're just two people that want to meet, you just, this could, this is kind of a, an, a space for that kind of meeting. Did you test uh, the sound, how the sound carried, Tina? Uh, Charlotte did. And she said, you can hear, but you know, you can't hear clearly. I, but I would put a cautionary sign in there. I think, please speak, you know, let voices keep them moderate. I think if you speak loudly, I think you probably, yeah, can hear it. But if, the, if it's just a normal conversation, I think uh, it's, not, it's not soundproof completely. But I do think that you can have a normal conversation with some, with some level of privacy. I was surprised, uh, just it, for anyone who hasn't seen it, at how commodious it is. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't put 20 people in there, but you could certainly have a group of four to five and be very comfortable. I was, yeah. we, so yeah. I almost forgot about that because we were focusing all our efforts on the two new rooms. And then we got this amazing <laughs> quiet study third new room that, that was almost like it was like a miracle seeing it because we hadn't done all that looking and planning and aggravating with the architect and all that stuff. This one just seemed like Tina and Charlotte one day went out and bought some walls and <laughs> there it was. So I, I have to great. give Charlotte, you know, she is the guru when it comes to space planning. And uh, she, she's the one, because we had, our focus was in another area on the first floor where the local history uh, is. And we were running into uh, issues with the HVAC system over there. And uh, then there really wouldn't have been uh, any level of um, privacy because we couldn't take the walls to the ceiling because of the, mm -hmm. the, the ventilation. Where on this side, uh, we didn't have that issue. However, there is a heating unit in that room and um, we noticed that it does get quite warm. So I think we'll, we'll advise people to crack the window in the winter months uh, when the heat is on because uh, it, it will probably be a little uncomfortable, uncomfortably warm if the door is closed. So, you know, again, when you're retrofitting things, uh, these are the kinds of things you, you run to, you run into, and you try your best to kind of, fortunately, there is a window in that room that can be open, so that, that will help. But, uh, but we're not going to, our, our plan is not to have one individual go in there and use it for quiet study. The, the, the purpose is for small groups having you know two or more to use this room because that that was the need uh that we we found with people's requests especially you know gloria would get these calls frequently do you have a space where i could meet with somebody i have a small group that would like to get together and talk about a committee meeting you know but you know and the, and the room is uh, the band of room is booked or it's not even a committee it could just be sort of a, a neighborhood group that just wants to plan a, a neighborhood party and they don't want to use somebody else's home you know so i think I, I think this will have a different kind of 
use, and I think it will be um, well, you know, well used when we get, you know, get, get back to normal. So uh, we can. Does it have any ability for technology, for example, like putting uh, something up on? Go ahead. Wi-Fi. I mean, but there's no other uh, like uh, like screens or anything. You're talking about more okay. like that. No. Screen no. or okay. a projector. Projector. No, I, I. That's that's no. I think if we, I don't. Our plan is not. To, to do that in there at this point, maybe in, maybe okay. in future, but I, I, that was not really in our vision, Kathleen. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I, I think just, the, the Wi-Fi should be, and we, other than the Wi-Fi, there's no data drop with the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the town manager, mm -hmm. Paul, had his meeting with department heads last week just to kind of go over the budget instructions. I think this challenge is an actually okay shape. I thought it was a little, I thought it was more optimistic than I expected and just, wants us to hold, 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 the, hold the line and maybe just not go up more than 1% uh, overall. I think that's his goal and to try to um, you know, keep the you know, conservative budget as much as possible. So um, given that I've started to work on the, on the numbers and given that we've had such a turnover in our staff this year, this, since I've been director, this is the most turnover given in any one year. I mean, it began, you know, with, um, we, the retirement of Lynn Harris back in January. And then we had two of our other full-time people uh, leave for different reasons. Uh, you know, uh, Danielle, our marketing librarian went to North Carolina and then um, there were some you know, childcare issues going on. And then there was two retirements, uh, some part-time people uh, left. Uh, so anyway, we had a lot of um, uh, people leave for different reasons and uh, it impacted the budget in a, a way where the numbers have come down because um, as many of these people were at the top step that had had left or retired or resigned more retirements were at the top step salary step so the numbers have come down just by uh, that fact so but um so in some ways i've been able to do what jeff one jeff with the town manager wanted because of the circumstances here. Personnel is your most expensive um, part of your budget anyway. So um, everything, but the numbers where the numbers will be going up uh, again every year is our contractual budget. Uh, seems to, because I mean, obviously now we're at paying for Zoom and a lot of these new uh, virtual programming, so, you know, some of the software we've been purchasing. So, uh, and other kinds of services that we find uh, are are useful to presenting programs and services are contractual types of uh, services. So there is uh, an increase in that area. But um, I will send you a copy of the budget before our next meeting. Uh, it is Jeff's, but the budget is due in his office on December 4th. That is before our meeting, but I will also send you a copy as well. So one of the uh, actually purchases, which was a um, software platform. It took us a while to get our head around what it offered, but we really were pleased. Charlotte, uh, Brad, and I had a, uh, um, a webinar intro with the uh, vendor, and uh, we decided to move forward because it really is this, uh, I sent you a link, but it really is a platform that allows us to get info, uh, art and content from the community and to, and to share it with the community. Uh, for a lot of this, some libraries are using this to collect a lot of local history content. So we thought it would be good for the 150th anniversary of the library if we wanted to collect people's memories, uh, photographs. Uh, you can do this in a way where people can submit them themselves, and then we can, and they are organized on this platform for sharing. And it also can be, uh, they, uh, can use it for um, uh, poetry contests, uh, art contests. And, uh, you know, it could be media, it could be music. People uh, who want to, uh, if you want to have a music contest and someone wants to perform, you could put things, it's, it's quite uh, robust. And we're going to get a, uh, uh, the department, our library department heads are all having to have training uh, Thursday, Thursday afternoon to kind of, uh, so we all understand how to use it. Uh, but I think it has a lot of potential, for, again, for new kinds of programming, but more and, and to engage the community in uh, sharing their talents and the information that they have. So I think, uh, and helps us with different kinds of programming. Um, so uh, I'll just stay tuned. So as soon as we get it up and running, I'm sure we'll do something really cool with it. But I, anyway, so the reason I'm telling you is because I had to use state aid money because there was no money in contractual. So, so but uh, in the new budget, I will be charging this going forward to contractual costs, but to get it off the ground now and to get it ready and 
so we can learn how to use it for the 150th anniversary of the library. We wanted to do it sooner rather than later. So we, we can kind of figure out how to uh, best uh, take advantage of this service. Um, and speaking of the 150th anniversary, so I've reached out to um, Diana DiGregorio Terry, and Terry McDermott, and also Kathleen Reynolds has also indicated she would like to be on the committee. Oh, and Anne St. Ange, did I forget to put her, I think I didn't put her name on my report, Anne St. Ange. So we really have a, so we have a representative from the trustees, from the friends, of, uh, we have our Terry from uh, Harden, you know, his, our Harden Tavern, our hist town historian, so to speak. And Diana, I, I called uh, on her I mean, because of the 4th of July committee and her, her history with them, thinking that maybe, I know they do a t-shirt every year. I don't know, who knows what the summer's going to bring, but um, I thought that we could coordinate our plans with the 4th of July committee if we were doing anything. However, Diana has, after many, after 25 years on the committee has stepped down but she I still has connections with the committee and I think she'll still be a good representative. So I think you're, just a lot of these people who have been serving for so long on the 4th of July committee have decided to uh, close the books. <laughs> and I know uh, some other people have as well. But um, so anyway, after the, after the holidays, I'll, I'll email everyone and we'll have a meeting and kind of begin to think about some of the uh, uh, ways that we can celebrate it. Either we can, hopefully we can gather, but if not, what else can we do? to bring recognition to this, uh, to our, our library's 150th anniversary. So we'll be thinking about, uh, and if you, anybody has any thoughts, please email me. Uh, all ideas are welcome. So that's what I have in, under new business is the uh, FY22 action plan. As you know, the, um, we have to do this every year for the board of library commissioners. Uh, and the, um, it's, it makes it's uh, by, do, by making sure we have one on file, it does continue to uh, qualify us for federal grants. But even even so, it's a good exercise uh, mm -hmm. to do because it, it helps us to think ahead, <laughs> uh, which is very difficult right now in, in some ways, not knowing what the sum, what you know, this, this would begin on uh, July 1, this action plan. And it's hard to put a plan, uh, not knowing where we're going to be with the pandemic. But um, mm -hmm we feel that we can uh, at least begin to think about these things. And some of the things are, I say, pandemic neutral. We could still do them anyway. Uh, so I think we uh, are, think get, we have had input from, you know, children's and adult services and technology and had a couple meetings with everybody and edited it a few times and uh, see where I think we're, we're good to go. So I'll be happy to answer any questions on that if you had a chance to look at it. I don't have a question on that, although I did take a look at it. Um, I had a question about uh, your first topic there, Tina, um, in-person visits. Yeah. So in the unfortunate event that somebody tests positive for COVID, whether it's a staff member or a visitor, yeah. is there a plan in place to contact people that have been in? Are you keeping track of people who come in? Or is it, or would you put out a public service announcement saying libraries closed for 48 hours? If you were here, you might want to get tested or something like that. Well, the, for, let me just say a couple answers to this question. So there, with the contact tracing, when that started, the board library commissions do to sort of, they, they, they have said that libraries don't have to do contact tracing because of the whole privacy issue. Uh, and I sent that to Shelly at the time and she said that was fine. However, we did when we were doing appointments, we were tracking because we needed to take the names. So we did have the names because that was this, the way that the, the system was set up. So we still have names uh, going of the um, you know, children's department is still doing names. We have not, and we have not been taking names of our visitors. We've been just doing checks as to numbers. So we haven't been logging in names that way. So um, I think that, um, so we wouldn't know, and I think it's the same things if you went to market basket, we just wouldn't know uh, if, if somebody who had come in had had contact to COVID uh, unless they told us they were in the library. So what um, if a staff member tested positive? So if the staff member tested positive, I did ask Shelly about that and I think that would, she, I didn't get a definitive answer. So I think um, we may, I, I guess, given the fact that we are a small library and we were in contact with each other, I would, I would expect that there would be some, or certainly rollback at uh, some level. I mean, whether it would, we would completely close or just 
close to the public or staff would be sent home. One of our staff members did get a call from the town nurse last week and was told to quarantine because, because of the contact tracing, apparently uh, became aware, the town nurse, that she had been exposed to uh, somewhere where she had gone. So she's under quarantine and will be coming back in a, in a week. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, I would expect that we would have to certainly alert the public if, if there was a staff member and probably we would have to go into quarantine. Uh, some, some libraries are doing what, and I just don't see this as doable here, having certain staff work on certain days. Uh, I think that I find that would be very disruptive so that if one, you know, that you always wouldn't have to close services down completely. But I think scheduling and our services would be really negatively impacted if we tried mm -hmm. to. And uh, so that I don't think is an option. Um, I think if the worst case scenario is that we would all have to quarantine for two weeks if mm -hmm. something happened. And that so this, this hip of concern that institutions have, I, I find it interesting um, for a couple of reasons. So I went to the Peabody Essex Museum over the weekend. I just went to the gift shop. I didn't go in, I didn't go through the museum at all, but just to go through, even just to get into the gift shop, I had to give a name and number yeah. and yeah. a zip code. Yeah. Um, then I go into a courthouse, they don't take any information. And if someone, a staff member or a police officer um, or even maybe an attorney that goes in there and tests positive, somehow, we're notified that we're sometimes we're just notified that the court is closed. Sometimes we're notified that a staff member tests positive mm -hmm. or a police officer that was there tested positive, but there's no contact tracing. So I just, I find it really interesting that yeah. there's, you know, this, oh, this, these HIPAA concerns and I get that, but you know, um, I, I don't know. I find it really interesting. So, um, I think it would be complicated for the library, especially because, right, how you're such a small institution, mm -hmm. um, you know, amongst yourselves, I'm saying, if there's, yeah. if there's yeah. uh, right. a positive I mean, test, you'd probably have to shut right. down. And I just wonder for how yeah. long. And then obviously if there's a public service announcement, people are gonna know, okay, I was in there at that time, I should go get tested. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. yeah. Cause I don't think you have to give up the name of anybody. So, so yeah. the, the courts aren't doing it. They're saying someone in the clerk's office or somebody in this yeah. session, you know, yeah. okay, well, what time frame though? You know, because sometimes you're in one session and yeah. that clerk's not there and then you go to another court and then, so it's, it's crazy. It's really challenging. Yeah. And I do feel like, I don't know, but I, that, that it's starting to feel like it's coming closer. Do you know? Mm. I think it's so, the numbers are going up and I feel yes. like we yeah. hear that it's encroaching on us and mm -hmm. uh, is it just a matter of time? Uh, before someone um, on the staff or, so, or a patron that, uh, that has been in um, and says, okay, and calls the town hall, says, I was at the library, a certain, right. certain, you know, just and letting you know. And, and then uh, Shelly Newhouse would probably inform us and tell us what to do. And I'm just kind of basically, I guess I'm, I'm going to, looking to her to uh, uh, tell us how to proceed. Yeah, as uh, you know, uh, you know, and that's what we've been doing, sort of every step of the way, right. uh, you know, following her guidance. So, um, but I guess the worst case scenario is if um, a, someone on staff tests positive, that we would mm. all we would all probably have to quarantine. I'm expecting because right. we right. all are 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 in touch with each other mm -hmm. in some way, talking, or and then would probably have to let the the public know. Um, again, you don't say who, but uh, you right. do that. Right. But that would be certainly one case. And then if um, a, a patron who came in notified the town nurse, I mean, uh, the Public Board of Health, and that they were in the library a certain day, yeah. I'm not quite sure how that uh, would translate, but I would follow whatever advice that Shelley had told us uh, to what we would have to do. Uh, maybe not quarantine as long, but, but I, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. if we, yeah. you know, we all. Hopefully, everything I mean, we're doing the PPE as much as possible, but that doesn't, right. you know, yeah. people are still you know, caught in this virus. My my only comment is, given the small crowds at the library, mm -hmm. given the spacing that you've done for the library staff, uh, I don't think I don't, it, it doesn't feel like a high risk environment to me. And it doesn't feel like the uh, allowing patrons to come in whenever they want 
that doesn't feel like any higher risk than it was when you were scheduling appointments. Yeah, I agree, uh, Jeff. Uh, I, I, you know, you don't know until you do it, but I, I feel like it's a few more people, but it's, it's definitely all, uh, people are very cautious and they don't want to stay long and mm -hmm. they can't stay. They cannot sit uh, at a chair and, and, and read or look at a magazine or a newspaper. So it's very brief. And I think I read an article on virus load and, you know, you, if you're in, exposed to the virus for a long period of time, you know, your risks go up. But again, if you're in and out, uh, to just to pick up a book there, like you said, it's, it's, a, it's a lower risk than if you are spending a, a long period of time in, in, a, in a closed environment. So, so uh, we're hopefully we're doing all the right things and keeping people safe and the staff safe and the the staff is uh, really good. And I, I have to admit, you know, everyone's been good about masks. And one of the staff people who had somebody's mask either inadvertently or came off on a, was on a computer and uh, went right, she went, uh, the woman, uh, one of our staff people, Lisa, she went right over and said, sir, please put your mask back on. You know, so people, our staff is very proactive um, and, you know, people have been cooperative and you don't even have to tell them, you know, they're, they're looking for the hand sanitizer when they come in. Um, and if they come by and they, if they forget, oh, sir, did you put, did you do the hand sanitizer? Please keep your mask on. So, you know, it, we're, it's just now routine. Um, so, Gloria, do you have any other comments on, on the experience? No, I think everybody is, has been very careful about doing all the PPE. Yeah. Even the staff, if we're yeah. too close to each other, we make sure the mask is on. So let's keep our fingers crossed and everybody, mm. we all stay healthy here and, and uh, our numbers in Wilmington, so hope, hopefully maybe they'll come down, but Thanksgiving around the corner. <laughs> Gosh, mm -hmm. so I think everyone is just really concerned. Um, but if we all do the right thing, we'll get to the other side of this sooner. Any other questions on that? I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't give you more of a direct answer, Kathy. No, no, that's, I just didn't know if there was any plan in place yeah. or there were yeah, thoughts well, of a plan. Well, we, we know uh, if we have to roll back each, each what we have to do for each yeah. rollback. Right, right, so, right. Because right. we had certain things in place on each phase that we went through. And if you had to go back one phase, two phase, three phase, obviously, yeah, yeah. the first phase when we were home, we, we right. kind of know what we have to do because we've been through that phase. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Thank you, Tina. Was there more on the action plan? Are we done discussing that? No, well, no, I, 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 I what I should have done is said, did you do have any questions on my report before right. I jumped to the action plan? So I'll go back okay. just and ask if there are any other questions on my report uh, before we go to the action plan. Mm -mm. You can get that right there. So, I guess the action plan. If there's okay. any. I have one question. Um, there was something in there about celebrating or recognizing or doing an activity around indigenous populations in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And I was curious why it was limited just in the Northeast, if there's an answer other than the obvious answer. Just, yeah, you know, uh, there was, yeah, I, uh, I, maybe because that's just the focus that, uh, the first focus, not to say that we couldn't yeah. expand it. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, having been in a group group that just recently did a book, a long book on the Wapanogs. Ooh. <laughs> my choice. And uh, we were, it's sort of, uh, but actually this was not my action item. It was, uh, came from the staff, one of the staff members and um, basically, I guess there's a movement for saying that you are a uh, land of belonging to uh, that uh, Indian tribe uh, historically, and when you're introducing programs. So I, I had not been aware of that. So I felt that, I said, I think I'd like to expand sort of this action item to a program and maybe move towards that as a part of the program, identifying what, what, what were the Indian, um, indig indig I shouldn't say just Native American Indians, but indigenous people that lived here in Wilmington prior to um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. colonists. So, if, you know, maybe move towards that. You mean like Jim Maselli? <laughs> oh, Eileen, we're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. 
Well, he was so, here be, before Native Americans got here, as far as I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I wasn't aware of that book that you referenced, Tina, and I've been wanting to ask this question for a little while, so I guess now is as good a time as any. Is Does the library post the books on, on from the book groups anywhere, other than going through the calendar and finding out, oh, this book group is meeting, what book are they reading? The Do you have a list of like, okay, this book group is reading this list of books. This book group is going to read this list of books. So if I need, if I'm looking for a book to read, but I don't belong to a book club or I can't attend the book club, can I go to your list of books that you've read or are going to read and just well, borrow it? We, well, uh, well, let me backtrack. When we did the quarterly brochures, there were the, the books that were going to be read during that quarter. Okay. Okay. So now I think we're, uh, my book group that I do in the mornings, uh, the Wednesday morning of the last Wednesday of the month, we're not meeting in um, uh, November and December because of the holidays. So, um, but that's a good question. And let me uh, uh, talk with Aaron and see if there's a way to place that on the website as previous, um, you know, books that were read. I think the one year we did put in one of our uh, brochures, I, oh, I think it was January when we started the tw Read 20 in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually in that um, edition of the quarterly events newsletter, I, I believe we put a whole list of books from the book clubs, um, but that was in that. But a, a good place is, is to, so you can look on the website of other books that have been read in the past year by book club. Yeah, books. yeah, that'd be great. I think that's a great idea. You could have a little uh, drop yeah. down that said, what are what are library book clubs uh, are reading and have read or something like yeah. that. Yeah, great, great. Nice. That's nice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Tina, on the action plan, I dropped off with Gloria since I was in yep. today. Yep. Um, I, uh, we, it's already done. We Thank you. <laughs> a list of, of typos. But <laughs> yes, I also um, noticed that there was no mention of library ambassadors. And I'm hoping that that program does yeah. not go away. I think, the, you know, that mm -hmm. any time, especially for the 150th, yeah, um, I thought that, that they should be involved. Idea. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, oh, I know. And sorry, Dan, your current events, is that not happening? Because I've been looking to sit in on one or two of those. Am I missing something? No. Um, they will be <laughs> resuming soon, but they have not been happening. So you've not missed okay. that yet. But uh, okay. the revival tour is coming next month. So get ready. Okay, great. great. We, re we really are, because I, I have to say, I don't know, with all the Zooming and webinars going on, one of the most enjoyable parts of current affairs was being face-to-face -face over a table. And I know we're not gonna have that again for a long time. And I know that, uh, um, I just, I guess current affairs was special enough to me that so that I don't want it to be like just another Zoom. And mm. I don't see any way around it mm. really until we all get vaccinated. But um, maybe in depending on the spring and if the weather is nice um, and depending on where we are, maybe we could have it socially distanced in in the Peggy Kane reading garden or outside or somewhere just to all be together. Because I think there, there is yes. what Dan, I'm sorry. I'm certainly open to all sorts of different outcomes. So yeah, that would be cool. So I don't know. So you said next month, so we're going to start again in December? That's the plan. I don't know. I guess my feeling is that maybe everybody should get a two-week Zoom break um, for the last two weeks of December or something and then start again in January. I don't, and I'm not even working and I feel <laughs> Zoom fatigued. So, you know, I, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Eileen, you're always welcome, but it is it is an optional event. So. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, you wouldn't have it without me. I know you wouldn't. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. You know, I'm going to offer a different point of view, which is the only Zoom that I get is from my various volunteer and community activities. So <laughs> at work, um, we use a different system and we tend not to do video. So I don't see any faces mm. except for the family and, and maybe the neighbors. So, uh, so 
I like it when I get to see the Hollywood squares here. <laughs> I haven't seen people in such a long time. Yeah, I, I took it. I took an online class um, through Tufts Lifelong Learning um, that just wrapped up. And although it was a wonderful class, there were 25 people in the Hollywood Squares. And man, was that hard to manage for the person giving the class. Sure. But, you know, current affairs doesn't usually have that many people. So I'm sure Dan can handle it. And Dan, you're teaching remotely sometimes. So you should be, you should be able to do this asleep in with your eyes closed. Yeah, I do this five times a day every day, so I'm ready to rock. So if you're not zoomed out, I guess how could I be? Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's in. That sounds like she's coming. This is, this is what I live for. This is where I live. So. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Other discussion on the action plan? Oh, one more. Are we going to have 21 books for 2021? It's seen, and was that on an earlier action plan? Or are you going to no. only do it every other year? We're okay. going to take a break this year. Yeah. Has it, have you given any thought to reviving the community read? We have. And I always <laughs> end up thinking uh, that uh, not going down that road, although we may, I don't know, we just haven't, haven't, I haven't, I've given it a thought. <laughs> but then decided not to do it. <laughs> well, it, it is a lot of work. There's, I know yeah. there's no doubt about it. It's very labor intensive. I think what, I think it was that the late, I think it was labor intensive and I don't think we got the results at least in the last couple that yeah. we had wanted it. Given, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it was not getting back. And I think we, we decided to focus on the um, authors, the author, that, that's when we went to the summer author series because it seems like we were folk, wanted people to read different books and to connect with the author. Uh, and although we've, you know, that seemed to have worked well, where the uh, community reads seem to be going off track somehow and not really getting the, the buy-in that we had one to get given the amount of work that we had to put in. So. Is there any way to get connected with the one book, one story that the city of Boston does? Because even if we, you could get copies of that story and just, you know, leave them on the circ desk. Yeah. Um, that involves, that's very passive. You don't have to even have a discussion. You just have well, to give the story out. I mean, we can do anything we want in terms of the community reads. I mean, we, it doesn't have to be the way we, we, we could re reinvent it too, Eileen. You know, we could just, you know, uh, decide on a book and then get multiple copies and everyone reads it. So that's, and just, that's what really, I think that's what Boston's doing. I mean, we all, we did all these ancillary programs and, you know, uh, connected it with food, connected it with, uh, you know, things that were happening in the book. And, you know, and that was, I think that's where a lot of the energy went. And that's where the turnout, um, you know, seemed to be people would come to these, but hadn't read the book. So if we wanted, we wanted to focus more on the, the book and the author and, and what was going on in the book, that didn't, that was, we seemed to be getting away from that. That's why I think we went to the, um, the author, uh, the author events to focus just on sort of more on the books rather than the uh, things that were happening that were connected to the book. So you the one, the one city, one story. Yeah. I mean, the, the beauty of that is that it's a short story as opposed to a book. So your commitment is basically, yeah. Yeah. if you see it in the library, you take it home and you read it. You don't do anything except, you know, you don't you there's you don't feel no. anything beyond. Reading getting it. a chance to read a short story that you might not have read without taking a book out of the library. Um, so I, I think it would be very beneficial to us. I don't know how you get copies of those after the event is over, but um, just like I enjoy getting book page when I come into the library, um, the one city, one story, I think is a great idea. And I wish I would like us to be able to participate in that. If you pick the same one that they're doing or just pick one of our own? No, just the same one that they're doing, just to distribute it, like book page. Well, well if you distribute it, that means, uh, okay, we have to buy the books and give them away. We can't use town money. No, no, that. it's just a short story. It's not a book. It's oh. one story, one, one city, one story. And the, the committee that picks, every year a committee picks a short story. Tom Paradas was the first one. And they print it up in a little format, like a little book, but it's only a short story. And I, as far as what programs the BPL has, I'm sure they do, but you know, I never participated in any. I just enjoyed every year when I pick it up in various Boston bookstores and it was free, 
to just get a, a cool free short story to it. So it was just a photocopy of the book or actually? No, no, it's, it's printed nicely in like a format of a tiny, of a small book about this big. And it's however, maybe 10 pages at the most. Um, and it has a, a nice cover on it. I, I don't know if I have any, um, but I know that, that the one book, one city, one story group uh, gives them out to bookstores all over Boston. I don't know if they're free or they pay or whatever, but it's, I thought it was a great program because there's just no, com it's, a, it's something it, that when there was normal life, people could just grab it, read it on the subway and then you know, you're done with it. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to look into it? Sure. Okay, I will. Has anyone else ever seen this or, or just me? I don't know that I've ever seen it. I'm not sure. You guys never go into town, that's why. <laughs> we should stay on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will look into it because I think, uh, I, I always got them at prison book because they always you know, sent them as kind of an extra thing to incarcerated people as a little mm -hmm. gift. So I'll okay. check into it. Okay, sounds good. else on the uh, on the action plan okay back to the agenda sorry I was trying to unmute myself <clears throat> so I, I guess I'm curious what the uh, intergenerational Saturday science series would be is there an idea in terms of I mean it sounds interesting I just haven't a clue in terms of I'm gonna uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to ask the children's librarian Okay. <laughs> so the yeah. uh, I, I think what they would I think the whole goal is to get families to work to, you know with their kids on these programs and as part of our uh, Wilmington's Earth here as you know we kind of had to put that kind of went down or went away for a while when we went into shutdown and Barbara did a whole lot of things even when we were during shutdown on citizen science that uh, she put it on the website lots of activities kids kids and parents could do at home regarding science in their backyard. She didn't get a lot of traction. She got some, but I, I think she would like to continue some some of that. So that's I think that would be something that would be something that parents, kids, and parents can do together, uh, that are science related. I think that's that's the most I could tell you, Jim. I don't right. have anything specific. <laughs> Feel free to call Barbara. Very well. It sounds, it sounds interesting. Holly. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so jumping back to the agenda. So Tina, we've covered all of your report. Was there anything under old business? And then there was new business was the action plan. So we've been through that. And then we would be on to public comments. And I would add to that trustee comments. Yes, Tina, do we have anybody on the line that no, wants to? No, nope, not today. Okay. Then uh, I guess we're on to trustee comments. And uh, maybe I'll just go around the grid. Uh, Dan, anything that you might want to say? Uh, sure. Yeah. So I kind of already mentioned it, but we're going to attempt to bring back the current affairs group in December. Uh, to be totally honest with you, I'm not crystal clear on the date yet. I was talking uh, with Charlotte about that. Um, I know it will be happening in December. So okay. that's exciting. And also, as I mentioned before the meeting, our next trustee meeting is on my birthday. So that. <laughs> I can't imagine a better birthday gift. So. <laughs> we scheduled it that way intentionally, Dan. We were thinking of you. Okay. All right. Anything else, Dan? Um, how about Don? I went to a Zoom uh, meeting on Saturday. It was the, I think, MLTA, which is Mass Library Trustees Association. Mm -hmm. There's so many different acronyms floating around, but uh, it was pretty interesting. There was a woman from out of state somewhere who, who was the keynote speaker. Her name is Sally Reed. Um, and it talked a lot about board diversity and um, things along those lines, different board structures. 
mem memorandums of understanding between friends and and uh, boards of trustees and stuff like that. So there was just interesting things going around. Nothing that I can just say, here, let's do this. But I could send around a bullet list, I suppose. What list? I said I could send around a bullet list. I think I, I wrote down se seven things that, that sort of struck me as interesting. Sure. Okay. Don, anything else? Nope. Um, how about Eileen? Nope. All right. Thank you. How about Jim? I don't think it's uh, related to the library, but I'll, I'll mention it because I, I think I may have mentioned it before. So I've got a couple of days off from work coming up and I'm going to try and reach out to um, see if I can determine the judiciary constitutional process of of having a town meeting in section debates broadcast locally and then uh, the, all the articles voted at the booth. Um, I, I know a couple other towns, you know, 20 something thousand that do it this way. In, Will in Massachusetts? Uh, not in Massachusetts, no. Oh, okay. But um, I mean, I grew up in New Hampshire. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and I know the town moderator mentioned this at the mm -hmm. last town meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something I thought about and I've been thinking about and I keep talking about doing it, but work and life keep getting in the way. So um, I have to take some time off for the end of the year. So I'm going to try and reach out to some towns in New Hampshire to see how they do it, to see if I can um, cobble together a process that will work in Massachusetts, maybe. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Well, well, we'll see how far I get. Yeah, good luck with that. That's a big <laughs> undertaking. <laughs> Sounds like it anyway. OK. Yeah. Kathleen, he may sign you up to uh, consult or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind taking time off from work, believe me. So, <laughs> Jim, did you have anything else? Uh, that was it. Thank you. Kathleen? A uh, couple of things. So in Woburn, where my office is, um, I see a lot of lawn signs. We support our librarians. Have you uh -oh. seen these anywhere? Well, you, have you heard, do you know any of the background of what's happened at the Woburn Library? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. That, that's uh -oh. probably the result of, uh, there There was some unfortunate, uh, it was, actually it's been a few months. It's, I thought it had settled down, uh, but there was a lot of the staff had been uh, let go and um, by, uh, with the support of the library director, and the, um, the city, I guess, mayor, mm -hmm. and, but they didn't need these uh, staff, the staff any longer. Now, um, which brought a protest among the area libraries. And I know MDLC directors wrote a letter to the board of trustees at the Woburn Library opposing it. They had uh, letters from other con consortiums and opposing this move. The um, been very tense, I think, mm. uh, between the staff and the administration. They are open. They are providing services. I think their friends disbanded during this uh, a whole event. Wow. So I think it was quite messy. Uh, hmm. I haven't heard anything recently uh, um, about what's going on. I, but it's it doesn't sound. Um, things like the this it was controversial between this again the staff and the administration in the direction that the administration wanted the library to go wow well, that's too bad and my other comment slash concern maybe so i uh emailed the friends of um wilmington library and i i know well i emailed the friends and i suggested that i would be willing to volunteer for a couple of things and i haven't heard anything back and I don't know if that's typical or if, if not, nothing's available, or I guess my concern is that I didn't even get a, thank you very much. We'd love yeah. to have you. you know? well, well, that's, so. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I would for, you know, Ann St. Ange's president. Okay. And she was, if anybody will send you a response, 
<laughs> ASAP is Anne. Okay. So uh, the generic email, I'm, I'm not, some, I don't know if that goes into a black hole or mm -hmm. if that generic email, uh, I know the people checking it are not checking it as often as they should, perhaps. Okay. Everybody is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my suggestion would be uh, to, to shoot an email to Anne St. Ange. If I, could, I could actually forward you her email. Okay. Experience and then have her follow up. Okay. Have, sure. Okay. So Thank you. Kathleen, the friends are meeting monthly. Mm -hmm. And then the bookstore has been open up until now. It's been open about every two weeks. Okay. Uh, mostly outdoors. And so there's been a need for volunteers for the bookstore. Uh, and in fact, the number of volunteers is down uh, in part because a lot of the volunteers are older and uh, concerned about COVID more so uh, than maybe uh, younger volunteers might have been. Unfortunately, the bookstore is closed due to winter and not being able to comfortably have the outdoor sales. Mm. And not sure when it opens back up again, uh, but certainly uh, talk with Anne, and I think she'll be able to mm -hmm. give you some okay. volunteer I will do opportunities. That. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so I, I guess it's... Oh, Jeff, I forgot. Uh, I forgot to remind everybody about there was an. Uh, I sent you an email that came from Jeff Hall about uh, public records law uh, webinar. Don't know. <laughs> I have to leave now. No. <laughs> yeah, November, it's on November 30th at 7 p.m. It's um, town council is going to be presenting that. And Jeff Holt wanted me to respond to him as to who will be attending. So I probably will, definitely will be. And Don Pearson did email me that he'll be attending. So just you don't have, you know, if you're available and you're going to be attending that. Uh, I know, I, remember, I, think, I think it might be similar or maybe the second part of what we all went to the couple, was it a year ago when we all went to the auditorium and we heard that. That night was three hours. Yes, I, I don't know. I, I, I just can't imagine looking at a, a three hour Zoom. That was yeah, yeah. no break and no break. Yeah. You're, uh, yeah. you're selling it well, Tina. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I saw Jim's face and I, was, and I remember Jim got up. I, I, because he couldn't sit any longer so I, I i hear you uh yeah i i'm i'm just passing it on i'm not discouraging or encouraging but um i will say it officially is just i'm sure this is very informative and important so, <laughs> so tina i, I guess the record show <laughs> yes, I, I guess i would ask um so similar to ethics where we do a certification every year yeah is there a recommendation for how often we attend these i mean so certainly uh, attending every Every two years, or um, once a term. I don't know, and I, I guess I don't know how different this is. I, I don't know if you know this may be more of the same, and uh, but a bit of a, you know part two because I don't think they would give us the, the same uh, webinar or ser oh, I should have almost said sermon uh, presentation as we we received. Um, I think it was about a year ago, maybe two years that we received that. Um, I, I don't remember how long ago it was. I know it was before the new chair order came up because we were talking about how uncomfortable those chairs were for a three hour period. Yeah, uh, public public records law uh, is different than open. I think that was that main, that was a lot about open meeting law, open but public meeting. records law is, is different. Meeting. Yeah, that, that one was a lot about open meeting, mm. I believe. And this one I think is public records law. Um, so, okay. all right. All right, so I have a, a comment. Um, so I received a mail from town hall and uh, it's something that uh, we're asked to discuss as a board and I'm just gonna mention it tonight and I thought we would discuss it at the next meeting. So it's a, a draft of a remote participation policy and Tina, I don't know if you've seen this as well, but so. it comes from the Board of Selectmen and by remote participation, I think it means, well, I haven't really read through it, but I think it's about meetings like this and uh, allowing uh, 
um, allowing remote participation, maybe even if it's not a pandemic. So anyway, I have this four or five page document and it sounds like I was the only one to receive it. Yeah, I uh, so, did not get it. So I think what I'll do is I will make copies of this uh, or scan it that is and, and put it on the town email and it's something that we can discuss at the next meeting. Um, what it says here is that the Board of Selectmen is seeking comments within 60 days or by the 7th of January. Your comments will be considered by the Board of Selectmen in advance of any decision to adopt this policy. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll send it out and we can talk about it at the next meeting. And did I have anything else? Um, no, that's all well, I have. So Jeff, just along that, that line, I'll, I'll mention that I, um, I believe in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, Tina or Gloria, that um, there has been a provision for a remote participation you know, before we had video of just over the phone mm -hmm. for, for trustee meetings. I don't, it's, I don't know if there's anything in the bylaws, the trustee bylaws that addresses that. I'd have to go and take a look. Um, I, I thought we had one before. We, we had a meeting with somebody who was on remote. You, you're talking about a trustee member. I think this is for public participation remotely, isn't it, Jeff? I think it's for board members to oh, participate board members. Okay. remotely. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't recall uh, Jim. Ever having a remote member, a remote participation. I, Eileen, do you remember this with Joan? Vaguely. Okay. Maybe not. All right. So anyway, I guess my intent was not to have the discussion tonight, just okay. to uh, tell you about it and okay. share it with you, and that for the next meeting we could have a discussion and decide what we wanted to share. Uh, what comments we wanted to share with the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I think we're finished with our agenda. Uh, is there anything else? If there's happy nothing else, yes, happy <laughs> Thanksgiving. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I don't know Kathleen why I mean, moves. Making, I'll second. Eileen I'll seconds. Second. Uh, with a show of hands, all in favor? Okay, we are unanimous to adjourn. And our next meeting is, Tina, when's our next meeting? Dan, when's birthday. our next meeting? December 15th. <laughs> December 15th. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving and uh, Thanksgiving. stay safe. And see we'll everybody. see you remotely on December 15th. Thank Jim, you. I have, Bye, everybody. Jim, you I have boxes for you if you want to stop by. Have a nice night, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.